individuals gave me the big breaks or would help me get to where I am today. And I would have to say the couple of hundred people at Jewett really uh, did that because they helped guide me through some tough times when I went in there thinking, you know, you run the division and the department a certain way and guys like uh, Sunshine and, and Junie, okay, to mention just a few of them, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there were some other characters we had back then, and they really straightened me out. And, uh, and that was like, to this day, I give them credit for that. I learned a lot from the team there. They were very patient with me, got me over the big steel philosophy, and, and helped me understand what was really important. And, and uh, the rest is history. I'm a little hesitant here because I don't, I think we're doing this at Nucor more than most others, but I'm going to still include Nucor. We need to always be cognizant of the dangers of disruptive technology, particularly when it comes to materials and alternate materials that can be replacing steel and automobiles. You know, we had the threat from aluminum. I think, frankly, we stepped up to that threat. And with, with today's ultra high strength, low alloy steels, where you have the high strength, the lightweight, the formability. I think we've got aluminum, frankly, on its heels. Okay? Uh, it's our product is less expensive. It's more environmentally friendly. And we're meeting all of those same metrics as aluminum in terms of weight, uh, strength, and formability. But there's a myriad of other potential things out there that we better be aware of. You know, carbon fiber. How about 3D printing? What kind of a threat does that pose? You know, one of the things that I, has, that I am somewhat concerned about, it's interesting, John and I talked about this on the plane. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't you. Uh, at, it was, uh, I had lunch with Joe Stratman, and Joe Stratman, another one of our EVPs, and I spoke about this. And this is not just the steel industry, but in general. It talks about, in America, we've become so focused on short-term gains with return on assets, return on invested capital, all of these ratio metrics that are short-term metrics that no one is willing to go out there and say, I'm going to do what Nucor did back in 1968 and start using electric arc furnaces, knowing that you're not going to see that benefit for five or six years, okay? Or with thin strip casting, where you know that for the first year, you're going to get clobbered like we did. Okay, Crawfordsville was a disaster the first year that we had it, okay? But all, you know, the, the, the stock market and the boards of companies today are so focused on short-term success that if you invest in something you know is a disruptive technology, but it's going to take years to it, so if it really comes into its own and pays back, okay, and creates a whole new industry like we've done in, you know, with, with uh, electric arc furnaces, hell. In 1968, that's not that long ago, we were the only one who did it. We had one furnace. Today, 65% of the steel made in the United States is in electric arc furnaces, 30% in the world. Okay? That's disruptive technology. But, you know, it's very challenging when you have boards and stock analysts and investment analysts who are looking at your return that quarter. What was your earnings per share last quarter? That gets to be a challenge to really, and that's and that's we have to we have to recognize that, and we we need to step up to the plate, and we've done some of it at Nucor, even recently with Castro, a new technology for making sheet product, you know that built the first one in 2002, and we're still struggling with all some aspects of the technology. That's a long-term project. DRI would be another example where long, direct reduced iron is a, a DRI. It's another example of, of a technology and something that will pay big dividends 15 to 20 years from today. So what are some of the things that we are doing at Nucor? Uh, well, we have, we, we support the, um, I'm gonna, I always mess up the, the initials, AWMI, okay? I mean, we're always a key, uh, what they call keystone supporter of that. You know, our team goes to many of the conferences and speaks, I've been, I think I've been to the annual conference at least five or six or seven times, okay, to try to draw our membership in and keep it going. At uh, Nucor, we support other organizations. I don't know how many people know about a, a group called the G100. 
and it's a uh, group of companies in, uh, that form this G100. And they have different programs for uh, young leaders to develop them. And they have a group for female leaders. And we have our, some of our team, female teammates involved in that. So we work hard within the group. We certainly give them every opportunity to, uh, to work out in the field or in the labs or in the offices. And we look for talent within the female uh, population at Nucor. And I think we've done a, an okay job with that. I think in the very near future, when I look at candidates for the executive team, I think that we've got some people, some women, who are now at the level where they're, uh, you know, we have, uh, I would have to count them, but we have several general managers in the ranks that are female. Uh, we have uh, one, two vice presidents that are in that group. And uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I might be wrong on that. There might be four. I don't really count them. But uh, so I think we're doing what we can. But what we need to do is a better job of recruiting women into the industry. And to that goal, we, do, we have our programs where we go out to the colleges and not only look to recruit in general into the industry and into Nucor, but we always have a good uh, amount of females there to help attract the female uh, graduate into our industry, because that's where it all begins. I'll tell you what it is, and, 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 and I mean this very sincerely. You know, in the early days of my career, it gave me exposure to other, you know, other people in the industry. And I learned about different types of steel making and different applications of products and different aspects of, of, our, of our industry by association through the AISE and now the AIST. Uh, the conferences were great. The shows are outstanding. I, 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 I you know, I, I, how can I say this? I'm always angry with, my, uh, with the people who make my schedule when I can't get to that show. I like to go to the show. I still enjoy going and walking around on the floor. I mean, it's a great, a great way to see the latest you know, uh, technology and the greatest uh, processes that are being introduced. So from, from, a, from a networking perspective, it was invaluable. From an exposure to different types of, and, and so strictly from a knowledge, a breadth of product uh, and technology and equipment exposure, it was uh, invaluable. I would. Obviously, you all are members, but I would be a strong advocate if somebody would ask me that that's not a member, I would strongly support it. I still am a member. I still pay my dues. I don't get to go much anymore, okay? But uh, I still want to make sure that I support the organization.